We're thrilled to welcome you all to another inspirational and educational episode of Concord Conversations. Concord Conversations is an initiative by Concord Medical Group to educate, empower, and encourage our community about our health so we can all live to our fullest potential. Hi, I'm Dr. Katherine Weinberg, Director of the Adult Congenital Heart Disease Program here at Concord Medical Group, Northwell Health. And in today's episode, Growing Strong, Nurturing Healthy Habits for Your Preschooler, we're talking about how parents can support their children. Today, we're joined by our amazing pediatricians, Dr. Daniela DiCaro and Dr. Sofia Gikos Costias. Both are amazing pediatricians at Concord Medical Group Northwell Health. We are going through as many questions as we can today, and we're giving general guidance. So if you have a question about your health or your child's health, we'd like to help you. So come in and see one of our spectacular Northwell physicians so we can answer your question and give your health and your child's health the attention it deserves. Let's get started. All right. What should a parent expect at their child's yearly visit? Yeah, well, now that your child is out of the toddler years and into the preschool years, the visits do become less frequent for, for physicals. They do become annual, um, so you won't be having to make all those uh, visits every three years or six months. At these visits, I mean, the usual stuff will happen. Um, you'll have the height and the weight checked. Um, but at this point, we'll be measuring vision and hearing a little bit more formally. Until now, we've kind of asked the parents, does your child see and hear well? Um, but now that they're a little bit older and can engage more, we'll actually probably do more formal hearing tests and vision screenings, as well as address any concerns that you've had. What are the recommended vaccinations and booster shots for children age three to five? At four years of age, you can expect to have your child vaccinated against measles, mumps, rubella, varicella, diphtheria, tetanus, acellular pertussis, and polio. It sounds like a lot, but we are safely able to vac vaccinate against all these harmful pathogens um, in just two injections. So long as your child has been up to speed with the CDC and American Academy of Pediatric uh, recommendations on um, uh, routine vaccines, um, these should all be booster shots. We, of course, recommend that children in this age uh, group, anybody really over six months of age, receive the flu vaccine. What are common signs of childhood illnesses and when should a parent seek medical attention for their child? It's completely possible for young children and especially among preschool attendees to contract up to 15 viruses a year. Um, and it, if it seems like your child is getting sick with one thing after the other, it's probably true. Uh, some of the most common symptoms that come along with these types of illnesses include coughing, congestion, uh, runny nose, fever, uh, diarrhea, and vomiting. Those are the typical types of symptoms to expect with either an upper rep respiratory illness or um, a stomach bug. When to worry or when to bring your child in to be uh, evaluated by a doctor. Really, first and foremost, I always recommend that if you have a concern about your child to bring them in absolutely without any hesitation. With upper respiratory illnesses, uh, something to really look out for would be breathing difficulty in a young child, uh, meaning if you notice they're having uh, faster breathing than usual or struggling to breathe in any sort of way, you would definitely want to have them evaluated by a medical professional. Signs to look out for would be nostril flaring, um, any sort of uh, rib cage movement that looks a little bit aggressive, and then also using the neck muscles up here to breathe and kind of straining those neck muscles. That Those can be signs that your child is in respiratory distress. Another thing to keep in mind is if your child is having fever for five days or longer, it's definitely a good idea to get them checked out by, um, by a physician. Lastly, um, another sign that does lend many children in emergency departments across the country in the setting of these types of illnesses is dehydration. So this could be due to a child not wanting to really drink much because they're having a sore throat, to a child having a lot of, um, a lot of diarrhea and not being able to keep up with the water losses in terms of um, hydrating themselves orally. If your child is not having at least three um, voids per day, then they should be assessed for dehydration. How can parents ensure that their child is getting a balanced diet? 
And are there any nutritional needs that they should be giving their child? Any vitamins or supplements? If your child is growing, chances are they are actually eating a balanced diet. You want to just make sure that you're offering a variety of fruits, vegetables, proteins, uh, grains, and calcium containing sources to your child. Um, one of the best ways to achieve this is by actually having as many family meals together as possible. It's a good way to um, model good eating behaviors and then also gauge um, what your children are eating. So in the situation of a picky eater, it's a good idea to just take a step back and assess what makes the child picky. Is it that the child doesn't like string beans, but maybe they'll still eat other vegetables like carrots or lettuce? Um, I wouldn't really focus so much on um, the child not eating a particular food uh, as long as they're getting nutrients as in other ways from that food group. Now, let's say if the child is not going to eat any fruit at all, ever, you have to be a little bit more creative here. Sometimes creative food displays or shapes may entice the child to want to eat that food. Uh, going back to modeling good eating behaviors, if the child sees you as a parent having a fun, positive experience with that uh, food, they're also going to want to try it. I actually have a quick story. Um, when I used to babysit in high school and college and all during that time. And this one mother of a child who I was babysitting, she um, was disappointed that um, her child would, it, would always scrape off the cheese and the sauce from pizza and only eat the bread part. Uh, and she's like, oh, that's the most nutritious part of the actual pizza. Um, so uh, it was a square type of pizza. And I had the thought one day to just cut it um, up into smaller squares and we were going to make pizza sandwiches and I would kind of hide the cheese and the tomato with the um, crust of each pizza on each side. So it was going to be a pizza sandwich. And um, so that child ultimately ended up eating the whole entire pizza without scraping off any of the cheese or any of the sauce. And sometimes it's just a little bit of creativity goes a long way. Essentially, practice what you preach, right? If you tell your kids to eat their vegetables, you need to eat your vegetables. Sorry about that. And also just to ensure that they get their calcium and vitamin D requirement. Uh, one, kids need uh, at this age need 16 to 24 ounces of milk or an equivalent a day. So that's really important. And that's sometimes something that falls by the wayside at this age. How much sleep does a child need? And how can you establish a good bedtime routine for your, for your child? A typical preschool age child will need anywhere between 10 to 13 hours of sleep within a 24 hour time frame. And this is all inclusive of naps. One of the good ways to establish good bedtime or sleep routines is to just get into a good consistent habit of doing one thing after the other. Okay, it's bath time and then we're gonna brush our teeth and then we're going to read a story and then ultimately go to sleep and kind of do it in sequence like that night after night so that the children know kind of what's coming next. What about activities and toys? How can you use toys to support a child's cognitive development? Books is probably the most important thing to allow for, you know, good cognitive development and actual books rather than tablets. Uh, continue to read with your child daily. Uh, take trips to the library and the bookstore and allow them to select books. Uh, play games that involve rhyming and sorting. These are so important at this stage because it teaches children how to organize things in, in their head and in life. A lot of times you'll see them playing games with toys that that seem to make no sense and then you take them away or you pick up the toy and they get really upset and they had some kind of plan that they that they have in their head and they, they wanted to follow that through so really encourage a lot of free play with whatever they want to play with um, offer lots of appropriate uh, age appropriate toys balls plastic bats um, child's golf clubs um, baskets anything that that helps them with their hand-eye coordination. And, and I, I stress with books rather than tablets because you want them to play in three dimensions. Uh, you want them to feel things. 
and be able to flip back and forth pages and and play games in real life. Dress up, make believe also helps with real life situations. Board games um, are so important uh, because they teach your child um, to wait their turn. A lot of times they, they don't want to wait their turn, but they by playing board games over and over again, they learn to take turns and to share. You know, there may be dice that they have to share. You want to also just allow them to do crafts and really get good with using safety scissors. Just lots of old style old style games and toys are really, really helpful. How much is appropriate for a three to five year old in terms of the screen time? In this um, sort of situation, when parents ask is that if they are going to expose their child to certain media, um, that it be some sort of high quality educational programming and that they, as the parent, are sitting next to their child and making it as interactive of an experience as possible and reinforcing any sort of educational um, ideas that are learned during um this type of media. We know that kids like to play and they have lots of accidents. What can parents do to try and prevent accidents and keep their children safe? Can't predict all accidents. Um, But what we can um, best do is really closely supervise them at all times, not necessarily interfere with them, but just watch and supervise. A lot of times we will um, put l- allow little ones to be on scooters and tricycles. And even though you think it's just a kid's toy, they should wear a helmet at all times other than when they're walking. If they're on any kind of moving object other than a car, of course, um, they should wear a helmet. In cars, um, just always keep them in, in an age-appropriate car seat. Follow the manufacturer recommendations. Get them involved in swimming lessons. Teach them water safety as early as possible. Even still at this age, they should always be kept at arm's length. If you're on a boat, um, always use an appropriately appropriately sized uh, life jacket. Teach kids how to be safe around strangers and animals, not to fear them, but how to be safe and always ask before they um, pet a dog, um, always ask permission. Also, just um, don't let them run around with food in their mouth. A lot of times, you know, kids eat a snack. It may be something that's a little hard and they run around, they're not paying attention and that's they can choke that way. So really just have them sit down when they're eating. Yeah, I think I think that about covers everything. How can you encourage a child to brush their teeth and have good dental hygiene? And when should they start seeing a dentist? In terms of brushing teeth in this age range, uh, preschool age range, uh, we definitely recommend brushing with a pea-sized amount of toothpaste, brushing twice a day for two minutes every day with regular flossing. Uh, Typically, we actually start to recommend that a child have their first dental evaluation when those first teeth come in. At this point, children should also be uh, seeing a dentist for regular dental checkups every six months. So some things that um, parents can do to help limit the risk of cavity formation in kids is by limiting sugary beverages, limiting the amount of candy that a child consumes, especially like sticky gummy type of candies. Those can really stick onto the teeth and be difficult to brush off. Um, And then also avoiding any sort of bottle use at this point, um, because all of those things can contribute to cavities. Great. What about how can a parent support their child's language and speech development? Get them involved with with day-to-day household activities and chores, because in doing so, you're talking and, and and they're responding and you're having conversations. Um, the more you talk to them about real life stuff and not using baby talk, but talking about, you know, picking out um, products at the supermarket or uh, doing some shopping for gifts, you know, just getting them involved with day to day. Really, you end up just talking so much and the language skills just really just grow exponentially when when there's a lot of conversation happening. All right. Great advice. What about physical ex- exercise. We know it's so important to encourage our children to play. How do you get them outside and exercising? If you're already active as a family, as, 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 a, as parents, then it's really easy to just get them involved with what you're doing, whether it be cycling or skiing or running. If you're not active as a family already, this may be a great opportunity for you to really think about um, how you want to live your life and, and, uh, and get them get them out 
uh, with you. I mean, aside from from sleep, children should not be inactive for more than one hour per day. So if you had one action step to recommend to our viewers to improve their health and their child's health and start today, what would it be? I would recommend something that you can do today to improve your health, especially through the rest of this season, is to set aside a date or time for you to go and get your flu shot and then also to make an appointment for your child to get their flu shot. This is really so, so important. One of the best ways that you can protect your child this coming flu season. Um, Give them your undivided attention and uh, everything else falls into place after that. Thank you for tuning in to another inspirational and educational episode of Concord Conversation. We'd like to thank our experts for sharing their expertise to encourage and empower our community. As part of our Concord community, we hope you'll share in our mission. Please pass along our emails and webinar links to your friends and family. In addition, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We know you may have additional questions about your health and we'd like to help you. So come in and speak to our extraordinary Northwell Health physicians about your health and your child's health. We care about your health. We care about you. Thank you so much for listening.